So the last conservation law that we have to look at in IB particle physics is we actually have to look at the uh, conservation of lepton number. Now this is the one that students least prefer just because the amount of work that goes into it is quite significant. So leptons, they do have their own quantum number, kind of like when we just looked at the strangeness number and the baryon number. They have their own thing called the lepton family number. So this one's a little bit different. Now, the lepton family number does have to be conserved in reactions, but it's a little bit more complicated because it actually has to be conserved by the family of lepton. It's not, not just the number itself, but it's by family. And there are three families of lepton numbers. We have the electron family that consists of the electron, the electron neutrino. We have the muon family, which consists of the muon and the muon neutrino. And then we have the tauon family, which consists of the tauon and the tauon neutrino. So what you'll see here is we have different lepton families. So we have the, sorry, we have the lepton number based by family. So our electron and electron neutrino, they have the electron lepton family number of plus one, but then for the muon and tauon lepton numbers, they're gonna be zero. And then for the muon, they have a lepton number for the muon family of positive one, but then for the electron and tauon family, zero, and same with the tauon family. They have a tauon lepton family number of positive one, but electron and muon lepton family number of zero. And then the respective anti-leptons, they will have an L value of negative one with their respective family. And then particles that are not leptons, so basically things that are gonna be made up of quarks, they're gonna have a lepton number of zero. So this one's a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more work to it, but we'll take these ones slowly. There's four examples, so we're gonna break these up into little chunks. So we have four reactions that we're gonna look at. We're gonna do the first two here. We'll do the second two in another video. So we're gonna look at the following reactions just based on the conservation laws of charge, the baryon number, and the lepton number. So we're gonna do four of these. So we're gonna do it based on charge, baryon, and then lepton number. So let's start with charge. So in terms of charge, I have this positive charge and my, uh, looks like in this case, an anti-muon. So this is gonna have a charge of plus one. Now, I have a positron here that is also gonna have a charge of plus one indicated in this superscript. And then I have this electron neutrino and this anti -neutri uh, muon antineutrino. Both of these neutrinos, they are going to have zero charge. In terms of charge, it looks like charge is conserved because I have one on the left side and I have one on the right side. So we're pretty happy with that. We'll look at the baryon number now. So in terms of the baryon number, we have our muon, we have our positron, we have our electron neutrino, and then we have our, again, our anti muon antineutrino. So our muon here, well, our muon being a lepton, or anti-muon rather, being a lepton, it's not going to be a baryon. So it's actually gonna have a baryon number of zero. Now, on the right side here, my positron, my positron also being a lepton, or an anti-lepton rather, it will also have a baryon number of zero. And then my last two pieces here, the two different types of neutrinos, or the anti neutrino and antineutrino, they are also not going to be, they are also not going to have any baryon numbers because they don't have quarks. So every single one of these particles in the reaction, since they lack quarks, they're not going to have a baryon number. So we have zero equals zero. The baryon number is going to be conserved. So the charge in the baryon, not a lot of work in this one. It's going to be the lepton family that's a little bit more work because we have to do this again. We have to do three separate ones. We're going to do the electron family, we're going to do the muon family, and then of course we're going to do the tauon family. So let's start with the electron family. So on the left I have this anti-muon. So in terms of the electron, the muon, and the tauon family, the only place this is going to have any number, uh, any lepton number is going to be with the muon family. 
Now, since it's an anti-muon, it's going to have a lepton number of minus 1, since it's an anti-lepton. In terms of the electron lepton number in tau on, we're going to give it 0 because it doesn't belong to either of those families. So we're just going to kind of do this step by step. So now, I have my positron here. Well, my positron is going to belong to the electron family. It's not going to belong to the muon or the tau on family. Now, for the electron, we have a positron. This is an anti-lepton, so it's going to get an electron lepton, or electron lepton number of minus 1. So we've taken care of the positron. Next thing we want to look at is we want to look at this electron neutrino. Well, this belongs to the electron family, so there's going to be no contribution to the muon and the tauon family. We can just put zeros there. Since our electron neutrino is just a regular lepton, this will get a lepton number of 1 in the electron family. And the last thing we have to deal with is we have to deal with this an muon antineutrino. So this belongs to the muon family. It's an antineutrino, so we're going to assign that a lepton number of minus 1. In terms of the electron and tauon families, since it doesn't belong to either of those, we're going to give those lepton numbers 0. So the last step is to check the conservation laws. Is the electron family number conserved? Does 0 equal minus 1 plus 1 plus 0? Yes, it does. We have 0 equals 0. Let's check the muon family. Does minus 1 equal 0 plus 0 plus minus 1? Yes, it does. Minus 1 equals minus 1. And lastly, is the tauon family conserved? Well, we got zeros across the board. We got 0 equals 0. This is good. So in this reaction, we could say that all the conservation laws are upheld. So this reaction is permissible. We're going to look at one more, and then we'll look at, as I said, we'll look at the next two in another video. So this time I have a proton. It decays into a neutron and a positron and an electron neutrino. If you uh, maybe you can make this connection, but this is related to the beta positive decay. We'll talk a little bit more about this later. So again, we're going to have our different conservation laws. We're going to have our baryon number, or sorry, we're going to have our charge. I guess we did charge first, then baryon number, and we have our electron family, muon family, and tauon family. So let's go through it. So in terms of charge, we know our proton has a charge of positive one. Our neutron is going to have a charge of 0. Our positron is going to have a charge of positive 1. And our electron neutrino is going to have a charge of 0. So plus 1, does that equal 0 plus 1 plus 0? Yes, it does. We have 1 equals 1. Let's look at the baryon number now. So the proton, a proton is composed up of three quarks. It's got two up quarks and a down quark. So this is going to have a baryon number of 1. The, new, the neutron is also a baryon. It is composed of three quarks as well. So it will also get a baryon number of one. And then our positron and electron neutrino, they are not baryons. They are not made up of quarks. So we're going to assign those a baryon number of zero. In terms of baryon conservation, we're going to have one equals one plus zero plus zero. This law holds. We're very happy. So charge and baryon number, they go pretty quickly. But now the fun part is we got to deal with the families. So let's have a look at these. Well, we're going to start pretty quickly here because we have the proton and then it decays immediately into this neutron. Well, the proton and the neutron, they're not leptons. The fact that they have quarks pretty much disqualifies them from being a lepton. So for the proton, the neutron, they're going to take lepton, zero, lepton numbers of zero in all three families. So the proton's going to be zero for all three families. So is the neutron. That was quick and easy. Now the positron, it belongs to the electron family. It is an anti it is an anti-lepton, so it's going to take a lepton number of minus one in the electron family. In the muon, the tauon family, it's going to take a big zero. And then lastly, we have our electron neutrino. This only goes in the electron family. It's a lepton, so it's going to take a lepton number of one. And in the other families, we're going to take a zero there. So let's check our conservation laws. Is the electron family number upheld? Does zero equal zero plus minus one plus one? Yes, it does. We got zero equals zero. And then for the muon and tauon families, 
we have zeros across the board. So we've got zero equals zero, zero equals zero. So this decay does hold. And like I said, you're actually going to see a little bit later that this has to deal with the beta positive decay. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, so stay tuned for that.